from my experience, which, you know, I haven't done any big, big budget movies, but from my point of view, I don't think budget actually doesn't matter. You always come up with some ideas, you know, mm. and there's always solutions. Mm. You can make Spotlight with one dollar, you know. That limitation is the one that took us to Toronto. The imitation is the one that took us to a certain format, you know, the way that we shoot. And I think that's also the relationship, right? Our art is not just, we can do anything. I don't say compromise, but it's more about, you're gonna come up with your ideas, mm. you know? You have to force yourself to the point that you come up with something. Original. You always strive high, so, higher too. Yeah. I think mm, you yeah. always wanna make it better. Whatever budget I assume, like you wanna always step it up. When you're working with a star like Johnny Depp, how do you do things differently? What I did pretty much was, you know, lit the set as a space. And um, I don't, and we didn't even particularly bring in diffusion because it's Johnny. I mean, also the character too. I mean, it was very appropriate that we left it kind of shadowy and even sometimes I don't even see his eyes, you know? You said to me, this is a family secret and you gave it up to me, boom. Don't look to John because he's not going to help you. You spill the secret family recipe today, maybe you spill about me tomorrow. Is that something maybe that's a possibility? I was just saying. You were just saying. Just saying gets people sent to Allenwood. Just saying could get you buried real quick. I mean, we had a great actors and then really it was kind of, it was a great position to be by the camera, to witness the great performance. What's the biggest mistake you've made? I don't know, it feels like every day is a mistake anyway, <laughs> on set. Like everybody says, I think mistake's a good thing, you know? I try to always feed off the mistake, you know, feed myself of the mistakes, so. Every movie that I shot, if I watch it, I go like, oh, here, you know? But then I kind of uh, decided to make me believe in a way that that's the way I felt about the story in that point of my story, mm. I mean, of my life. So if I shoot the same movie, the same script now that I shot like five years ago, probably different. So I don't see it as a mistake. It was me doing that in that particular time of my life. Now I enjoy the thinking of that way. This morning, now, later today, it's probably different. Maso, how much are your films manipulated on set? Do you do color grading? Well, for Black Mess, it was film. So it was all communication with the Daily Timer colorist and uh, Deluxe New York. But Spotlight was on, uh, we shot on Alexa digitally. And yes, we had DAT on set. But I, what I told DAT is like, you can do anything you want, just don't send that to lab. Just send the data to the lab, that's it. Don't send your metadata or anything. Because then I had a colorist at the lab at the Toronto Deluxe, and then we made sure that he has the luck from my DI colorists also. And that's the triangle of me and mm -hmm. DI colorists, the final colorist, and then the daily colorist. So we're always in the communication. Beyond having a great director, uh, Masa, what is the greatest challenge for you of being a cinematographer? What's the toughest part of it? I wish every script that I receive is the good story, something that I can commit to, but. It's not like mm. that, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think f to, to me right now, at this point of my life, I think the toughest part is to meet with the material, you know, the story. You, you seem know. very nice. Have you had friction? <laughs> <laughs> not really, but inside, yes. You know, internally, probably. <laughs>